A very important and core concept in ecology is the transfer of matter and energy throughout the ecosystem. Remember that in order to do the characteristics of life, such as reproduction, maintaining homeostasis, establishing order, uh, re and evolution, responding to stimuli, all of these characteristics of life so that they can po be possible, animals, plants, anything that's alive must consume materials from their environment and also gain energy so that they can do these things. That means that there must be a constant input of energy into ecosystems if they are to maintain their order. So the same way that life must maintain order, ecosystems are only going to maintain their order if there's a constant input of energy into them. So in majority of cases on Earth, the ecosystems are maintained by the sun power. There are exceptions. There are some things out there that make up their energy without using the sun, and we'll talk about them. But majority of the food webs or food chains or the ecosystems on Earth are maintained by solar energy. And there's a special type of organism that's able to trap the energy of the sun into organic compounds like sugar that can be used by other organisms in order to, to gain their energy. You may have heard of, before of the word producer. Producers are these organisms that are capable of, cre of doing that, of capturing the energy of, of the sunlight. Another term for that is autotrophs. Trough means to eat. Auto means to self. So autotroph is somebody that eats by itself. It can make its own energy. An example of that would be plants and phytoplankton such as algae or cyanobacteria. All of these are examples of things that sustain ecosystems both in the water or in the land. So plants, algae, and bacteria, including cyanobacteria, are examples of these autotrophs or producers. Now, what they do is that they trap the energy of the sun and put it into organic compounds, and they also produce oxygen. And then the consumers, also called heterotrophs, hetero means different, just like in heterosexual, you like someone of a different sex. So heterotroph means different, eat. I must eat someone different than me in order to actually survive. So these consumers include things like um, carnivores, herbivores, detrivores, decomposers, Anything in the ecosystem that must consume something else in order to gain materials and energy to survive. So what they would do is that they would eat the organic compounds con that were created by the um, or autotrophs and also consume the oxygen on the process to actually make a carbon dioxide and water. Now ironically, that carbon dioxide and water are the building blocks or the nutrients that the producers need to do the job again. So this could be a cycle, like you see on the right side, that repeats itself over and over. But to power this cycle, just like you're in a bicycle, and you, you can go in circles, uh, the, the wheels, but something must be powering it. What's powering is the power of sunlight. Now, through this process, the, the materials will be cycled through. You see how the organic compounds, oxygen, are, and carbon dioxide, water, the, the, the matter is cycling through the ecosystem. But the energy is not. The energy of the sun enters through the producers so that they can capture that but leaves after it's been used up throughout the food web and that's actually important even the plants themselves consume some of the energy that they actually trapped so that they when the consumers eat them they're not eating all of the energy they're eating only a part of it and we'll talk more about that when we talk about ecosystem efficiency but I wanted to clarify that there are two main types of organisms in the ecosystem. You have the producers, also called autotrophs, and you have the consumers, also called heterotrophs. Now, the two processes which govern this are going to be cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the process of getting that carbon dioxide that's in the air or dissolved in the water, and combined with water, through the power of sunlight to create sugar, which is an organic compound, and oxygen. Now, this requires an input of energy because you're building something. It's, it's what we call an anabolic reaction. It's an endergonic reaction, a reaction that requires energy. That means that in order to do this, you must use the energy of the sun. And that's exactly what happens in the leaves of plants and inside algae and cyanobacteria. Inside the leaves of plants and algae, it happens inside of a little thing called chloroplast, a little organelle that does that. You see here on the, on the left side. Now, anything that consumes that sugar to get the energy out of it is going to be doing the opposite. It's going to get the sugar, 
it's going to break it down in the presence of oxygen, something that's pretty much similar to combustion, so it's breaking stuff apart. It's, called, it's a catabolic reaction, exergonic. What that means is that it's going to release heat, release energy, and also release the carbon dioxide and the water, which ironically were the building blocks to do the photosynthesis, which means this is a cycle like I just spoke of. So whatever the plants produce, the consumers will release again. By the way, while I'm in the subject, Plants also do cellular respiration. People think that plants only do photosynthesis. That's not true. Think about it. Only the leaves are capable of doing the, the photosynthesis. What about when it's dark? Even the leaves will have to, to have the energy from somewhere else. And what about all the other parts of the plant that do not do the photosynthesis? That means that while only those cells will perform photosynthesis when it's light, when it's dark, or all of the other cells in the plants must consume the sugar that was produced by the cells that actually can make photosynthesis. That means then that plants, just like the animals and everything else that's alive, actually performs cellular respiration. So some of the energy that the plants produce actually gets consumed by the plants themselves as they are doing what they do, growing, developing, uh, reproducing, evolving, all of those things. So that's an example of energy being produced and consumed without the ecosystem. And remember that while the matter is cycling, and you can notice that in the drawing, that the sugar that was produced here is used up over here. By the way, there's a C missing here. I don't know why. But the sugar that was produced in, cellulose, in photosynthesis is used in cell respiration. So is the oxygen. But that the carbon dioxide that's produced during cell respiration is, is consumed over there, and so is the water. But notice that you're going to need an influx of energy to make this happen. And then this energy is going to be stored over here in the bonds inside the sugar. So when you break those bonds, you're going to release the energy. But this energy never comes back. It's not the same energy that goes back to power this. No. In fact, it's new energy from the sun. What happens to this energy? Well, it's used to do things like running, trying to catch food, respond to stimuli, reproduction, maintaining homeostasis. And some of it is even lost as heat that seeps off your skin and then it gets lost into space. So the energy flows through the ecosystem, but the matter is recycled through the ecosystem. So I hope that it's clear enough for you, and that's the basics of production and consumption. On the next video, we're going to talk about the different types of autotrophs. I'll see you guys then.